Hi folks, and welcome back to another video. As you might know, I like to keep switching Linux distributions and try new ones. And this time is no different. I took my laptop and I installed Pop! OS to try adjusting to it for the following week. So let's see how this went. First of all, let's start with installation. The process is straightforward and very intuitive, similar to most other distributions. Being Ubuntu-based, there's no obvious reason to radically modify the installation process, and this can be seen in practice. One thing I liked that is done differently than most distros is the fact that the user setup is done after the installation was completed and an additional reboot was made which means that it makes it very easy for manufacturers that want to use Pop! OS on their machines and also for third-party installers who can install the operating system on demand and leave the simple and intuitive user options to the user himself. A detail that you cannot really see when buying a computer with a pre-installed operating system or when someone else is installing the OS for you. Secondly, I like the interface. It was GNOME-based so no much different in the user experience department, but it was pleasantly tweaked theme-wise. Also, being the new GNOME in the version that I tested, everything was very smooth and without frame drops, a detail improved by the people at GNOME themselves, as we have seen in the Ubuntu 20 and Fedora 32 releases so far. I really liked that everything was prepared in a friendly manner for Linux newbies, but in a way that is extremely similar to base GNOME, keeping it clutter-free, both visually and performance-wise. An element that I couldn't help but give attention is the System76 Power Management Extension. System76 is the company that produces the systems running Pop! OS and the operating system itself, in case you didn't know. Back to the extension, out of the little parentheses I wanted to add, they implemented an entirely different power management system, which frankly works very well. I love the fact that the user can select the GPU at a click distance in the top right drop-down menu, as well as a performance plan. This is the first distro running GNOME that I haven't tried installing the CPU Power Manager extension, where you can customize frequency boundaries. And as a matter of fact, in my own testing, it has better battery life than elementary OS, which had the crown so far but the current elementary version is a bit behind, being based on Ubuntu 18. We'll see how elementary 6 stacks up when that will get released, knowing the fact that they are making big under the hood improvements and rewriting code. Speaking of which, this gives me a perfect opportunity to introduce you to this video's sponsor, Kite. Kite is an IDE autocomplete extension that uses AI and machine learning to help you code faster. It supports most major IDEs and programming languages, so no matter your workspace, it should integrate without the need of additional changes. Kite also supports working in teams and has enhanced productivity for Python, depending on what you need. Use the link in the description to download Kite for free. If you aren't convinced, try Kite yourself. You're not going to regret downloading it. I use Kite myself, and it helped me become more efficient while programming. Now, back to Papa Wes. One important factor that determines the success of an operating system is the software availability, because an OS that has no programs is useless. Being Ubuntu-based, you can use the APT package manager, or you could install Debian packages using Eddy. And that works brilliantly if you download them using the browser. But just like most distros got us used to, they come with an inbuilt software store. The Pop Shop is, in my opinion, one of the best Linux software stores there is. Firstly, it uses Flatpak instead of Snap that classic Ubuntu uses. Generally speaking, Flatpak is better optimized and better polished compared to Snap. Even the Snap store is buggy, so that is a definite advantage. Not to trash talk Snap, but I myself find Flatpak better optimized, and even you guys in the comments said this yourselves in the past. Another great thing about the Pop Shop is that it allows you to select whether you want the Debian version of the app or the Flatpak version installed. This is much better rather than having separate entries in the store for the versions of the app, 
because you can see from the get-go which versions of the app are available for download. Also, one thing I've always been a fan of is having the OS updates in the software store, rather than having a separate app that updates the operating system. So my overall view of the Pop Shop is that it is very well made and it's a great user experience. Stability-wise, I find Pop OS very good. I had no problems, no bugs, and everything worked. Everything went smoothly, and most of the other things are common on most distros and are common options on all operating systems. So there's no need to insist on those. Overall, I don't have anything negative to say about System76 operating system. One negative aspect that I forgot to mention during the initial recording session and the initial version of the script, and I'm now adding during editing, is that Pop! OS doesn't come with Grub. In the case you want to use it in a dual boot setup like me, you will need to change the operating system to boot using the BIOS, which can be at times a little inconvenient, but not a major one. This is the only aspect that bothered me about Pop! OS, and I wanted to mention it. It works brilliantly, and it is a more refined version of what Ubuntu should be. It combines the advantages of having GNOME, the extensions and themes, in an operating system that has a very good user experience, very good battery life, and good performance overall. GNOME, I am sure, is going to improve in the future, because even now, it is more taxing performance-wise than other graphical interfaces. But Pop! OS got the right balance of everything, and it makes a good operating system that I'm considering to use on a daily basis. It looks good without being cluttered, and offers a wide range of features while still being very easy to use and friendly to the end user. In my opinion, it is the best Ubuntu-based distro so far, and I'm looking forward to trying out new ones in future videos. So, this concludes the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. If you're a programmer, consider trying Kite, and if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video.